Well, young lady, you, did you hear me? What? Your curfew's at, at midnight. I was up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and you had yet to appear. Like, Where were you? Why, why didn't you call me? What's matter? going on? What does it matter? Yeah. You're my daughter. You're a young lady. You're out there. I'm worried about you. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. No. Nothing's going to happen. Do you watch the news? Do you read newspapers? Yeah. You know what happens to pretty young girls? It's not going to happen to me. It's not going to happen to you. No. no, you know what? It's not going to happen to you anymore. You know why? Why? Because you're going to be in your room. Am I? Yes. Mm -hmm. And your car's being taken away, and I'm canceling <laughs> your phone this afternoon. Are you? Yes, I am. I'll just use someone else's. You'll use somebody else's? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't like the way this conversation's going. So you can go to your room right now. And your allowance is taken away, and you want, and I want to see better grades, and I want you to stop seeing that person that you've been seeing the last three weeks. That's not. He's no good. good. You're no he good. He is. I'm no good. No. I'm no good. No. Where Where is this coming from? That's coming from him, Why isn't it? Why are you yelling it? at me? You've been hanging around with this person. He's better than I've been, you I've are. Been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been watching you in a slow decline for a long time okay. now. To your room. To your room. Okay, I'll just go to Sally's. So, dear friends out there in uh, Wonderland, uh, what you saw was probably an occurrence that happens most every day, and usually on a Friday or Saturday night between a parent, particularly a father, and a, and a daughter. So, and again, let me introduce myself and welcome to our weekly educational round here at Seclair. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my right would be... Robin. I'm a PA student from Chatham University. And on my left. My name's Abby, and I'm a PA student from Seton Hill. And here at Seclair, what we attempt to do every Monday is put out some type of a usable type of a technique and a tool that you can use in your everyday life. We just don't tell you to make lemonade when life gives you lemons, okay? What we try to do is help people give them the water, the sugar, the instructions, the water, uh, the pitcher, everything that needs to, to help them prepare for them in life, correct? Okay. Okay, and this is your first day here. This is my first it's, day. It's so good, so nice to see you here, Miss Robin. So one of the, the modality here that we use at Seclair is dialectical behavioral therapy, which consists of four modules. We consist of mindfulness, distress tolerance, emotion regulation, and interpersonal effectiveness. So today what we're going to discuss is an interpersonal effectiveness skill called Dear Man, which is an acronym for Describe, Express, Assert, Reinforce, Stay Mindful, Appear confident and negotiate. So we're going to go through this in another in another scenario in another scenario. Abby, I was so concerned about you. Uh, I was waiting up for you last night at at, at two o'clock, and you hadn't been home. Uh, and I was been, and I'm I'm can get upset, and I get concerned, and I get so worried about you because I love you. I love you so much. Uh, so I would like you to. I need you to adhere to your. Uh, schedule the curfew time of midnight. I need you to adhere to that. Uh, I know you know that I love you and your mother and I try to give you everything that we can and we want to continue that. However, Abby, should you continue to uh, violate the curfew, then I'm going to I'm going to be forced to. I'm going to be forced to take your phone away. I'm going to be forced to take your phone away. Okay. So uh, remember, Abby, I want you I want you home by midnight. Your curfew is midnight. But you never made my brother come home at midnight. Abby, your curfew is midnight. What is the difference? Abby, your curfew is midnight. And All I'm my friends to get to stay to out till midnight. What's it matter? Abby, your curfew is midnight, and I want you to. It's just a different tonight. time of the day. Just because it's dark out doesn't mean anything. My request to you, Abby, is that you adhere to your curfew of midnight. You adhere to your curfew of midnight. So try to look at the world through my eyes. Perhaps you'll be a parent someday. Try to try to see this through a mother's eyes or a, or a father's eyes. Tell me what. Tell me what am I seeing, Abby? What am I seeing? You well, be you be you be you be the father. What what would you be seeing? I guess you'd be seeing that I'm your only daughter, and you only have one of me. And it's a scary world out there. Even though I don't think anything like that would ever happen to me, but I guess I understand that you don't want something to happen to me. And other people aren't nice like you are. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. And I know that we want the, I know you're in college, and I know that you're out in the world. You're a, a young lady, and we have the midnight curfew on the weekdays. And, Abby, should you continue to adhere to that, your mother and I would be willing to uh, be flexible on the weekends. 
Okay. Would that work? Yeah. Okay. So what you what you saw there was a little bit different way about getting. Is that going to work every time? Of course not. However, what we're trying to do is look for a way where we can present a legitimate request to an individual and appear confident, be mindful, and get your get your point across. So has that ever happened to anything like you? Absolutely. Yeah, so tell yeah. us about that. Well, you don't have to go into details, but tell us a little bit about that. Oh, I've had situ I had a situation when I was in high school that I came home past my curfew, and unfortunately, I, I think it went more like the first example than the second example. But uh, Most do. Yes. I, I'm on the bright side. I learned not to stay out past my curfew, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. Well, sure. This not only works in a situation like this. It works in most every request in life. When you're dealing with the auto mechanic, when you're dealing with a boss, when you're dealing with a coworker, when you're dealing with a partner, what we want to do is remain. We want to. We want to keep our dignity and respect when we when we deal with interpersonal conflicts. Okay, and so remember what uh, what is eighty percent of communication, Abby? Listening. 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 Would you, would you say that is correct, Robin? That is correct. Absolutely. And have you ever been in a conversation with someone, either of you, when they've been looking at their watch or they've been middling with their phone? Mm -hmm. Or they've been texting someone while you're talking yeah. to them? So, Abby, have you ever been in the middle of a conversation or trying to have a conversation with someone and they pick up their phone and say, I I've got to take this call? Mm -hmm. Has that oh, ever yeah. happened to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how does that make you feel? Um, like I'm not important at that time. Are you sure? Absolutely. So everyone has a story that needs to be told, and it needs to be heard. It needs to be heard. So you know, tell me, tell me about a situation recently where you felt that you weren't being heard. Let's see. Well, I recently went down to South Carolina to visit my brother, and a few months ago, whenever trying to get it all figured out. I um I had some plans that I had made, but him, my brother, and my mom were kind of changing my plans around, and they weren't really, you know, seeing where I was coming from, and that frustrated me. Sure. Um, what does sometimes frustration turn into, Robin? Anger. That uh, frustration turns into anger, and sometimes it can turn into anger very quickly. Have you ever heard of road rage? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> so that that seems to strike a bell. Tell us about that. Um, that would be driving on 376 or through a tunnel in Pittsburgh every day. <laughs> you mean my favorite tunnels? Yeah, uh, Squirrel Hill Tunnel. The Squirrel Hill Tunnel. The Squirrel Hill Tunnel. Ab absolutely. So <laughs> tell me, tell me how you handle those situations. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times it's yelling, banging on the steering wheel. Uh, that's fortunately that's usually as far as it gets. But... And that gets you through the tunnels quicker. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> just makes me angry. Well, sure it does. Sure. Absolutely, and I'm sure that you'd like to have some interpersonal talk with some of the other drivers on the road, also. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So, uh, have you ever have you ever been in a long line of traffic? Let's say let's deal with any any long line of traffic, and you were de you were dealt one. Tell us about that story you were telling me. <laughs> okay. Well, recently, like I said, I went to South Carolina, and on our way through Virginia, we were stopped in traffic for two hours straight, and then we had the chance to kind of turn around and we chose not to because we thought we were going to be driving again we sat for another 45 minutes and that was horrible sure so tell me robin when you're when you're stuck in these lines and you look at the faces of all the other people in the other cars what do they what do they remind you of what do they remind me of um other people who were stuck in their cars you right alongside me <laughs> quite often what it reminded me of people who are uh afflicted with terminal constipation <laughs> they, 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 they yeah. just they just absolutely seem so miserable. Yes. <laughs> Did they not? Yeah. Absolutely seem so miserable. So and again, uh, when when we're asking persons when you're in that car, you're wishing you could be anywhere else, right? Yes. So quite often, what I ask people here is, "Where are you at?" I'm right here. Right. And when you're in that car, what time is it? It's right now. It is right now. That's correct. So you're in, so you're right there and you're right now. And what we try to avoid is time traveling. Okay. So also interpersonal effectiveness, uh, Robin also has to have relationship with yourself and communicating with yourself also. Okay. So quite often, Abby, when uh, you hear a friend talking, oh, I talk to myself all the time. Ba ba ba. Some people might say, Oh my gosh, you might you might want to see a shrink. 
Okay, you better, you better go talk to a psychiatrist. Well, here at Seclair, we kind of turn the tables on that. What we, enc we encourage people to talk to themselves. However, what we encourage is positive self-talk. Okay, so what we try to do is people recognize that, that they're thinking and that their thoughts, and quite often when they're having these thoughts and these thinking and these saying things, uh, there there's to be two people there. Did you ever think I can't live with myself? Uh, yeah. Yeah, have you ever thought that, Abby? Mm -hmm. Sure. So what does that tell you? That, that might tell you that there's two of you. Yeah. Okay? So when we're working on being the observer behind the thinker, or quite often in dealing with that inner critic inside you. You ever have an inner critic mm -hmm. that tells you that? Well, so what does your inner critic tell you? My inner critic tells me that I am a bad PA student, <laughs> and I don't study enough, and I'm never going to pass my boards. Mm-hmm. Ever have an inner critic inside you, Robin? My inner critic must hang out with Aunt Abby's inner critic because <laughs> that's absolutely what I'm telling myself most of the time. Okay, so quite often what we'll do is we'll ask those people, we'll ask them, who is that? Whose voice is that? It's my own. Okay, well, it's not your own. But quite often what we ask is, where is that voice coming from? Okay, so when this voice comes from self doubt, usually those, those type of thoughts can't come from someone or somewhere else. Okay, somewhere else in your life. Sometimes we grow up in a non validating environment. Mm -hmm. Or we hear these things, and, and we begin to write. We begin to write these bad reviews of our life. Okay, so we want to we want to learn an effective way to deal with those thoughts, to deal with those those voices that come into our head. Okay, you say so. We we want to talk to them. Have you? I'm sure that you've been in a bigger city. You've been there or anywhere where you've seen somebody that maybe you've viewed as homeless, chattering into the air, maybe some nonsensical thoughts. Right? Have you ever seen mm -hmm. that, Abby? And sometimes we think, oh my gosh, that poor that poor individual. Mm -hmm. I wish they'd get some help. Or we just, do we try to really avoid them, don't we? Just don't look the other way and pretend that they don't exist. But what's, what's truly the difference between them and us rather than they're doing it out loud? Mm -hmm. Sometimes isn't all those things going on in our heads also? Absolutely. Right. So what we try to do is to label and identify these thoughts and feelings. So you're going to be a physician assistant, correct? Yes. And if you're not able to label and identify what's going on with a patient, are you going to be able to help them? No. Okay. So Abby, stepping back and being mindful and being able to identify and label those thoughts and feelings, let us be more interpersonally effective with ourselves first. So the first part of interpersonal effectiveness is starting in the relationship with yourself. Starting the relationship with yourself. And I know that sometimes when we're alone, we're not with very good company, are we? Right. <laughs> so the idea is to learn how to help yourself and to love yourself and to start that relationship with yourself. And if you should you uh, wish to engage in any other activities here at Seclair or learn anything more about us, uh, Robin's going to tell you about that. Okay. So to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. You can also find this in other Grand Rounds on youtube.com slash video. And find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And as usual, we have a free prescription after every podcast, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask you to fish without bait uh, with a would-be life without no expectations. Uh, your assignment, as always, is to be good to yourself. And we have an additional homework assignment today. Uh, if you have a partner or someone uh, in your life, uh, perhaps a good friend, I'd like you to go to them and ask this good friend what or partner what attracts them to you. What, what attributes do you have that they find attractive and want to, want to want to stay with you with? And then I want you to write those down, and then I want that to become your mantra to tell yourself every morning, to tell yourself those things every day. Get some positivity in your life, correct? Yeah. Until then, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah.